Welcome back. I'm Kevin, and this episode is the second in a series about treating your home project studio. Now, what we'll be discussing today are the four zones of frequencies that exist within your room, two different software packages that we can use to assess the frequencies and modes and, and standing waves within our room, uh, and then the last thing we'll talk about is how do we use the information we've gained from those software packages to decide what treatments we want to apply in our room. But before we do that, let's talk about some very specific terms or definitions that we'll use during this episode. So let's get into that. The first area that I want to talk about are the four zones of every room. The first zone is the frequency that is twice the longest length of your room. Everything be below 28 hertz is considered the first zone. The second zone is made up of low frequencies that can often create standing waves within the small room. And standing waves are formed in a room where the distance between two solid surfaces equal one half the wavelength of a frequency. We refer to these as modes. So when I talk about a mode, we're gonna talk about a frequency that's within a room that potentially is either accentuated or is potentially diminished. But as that mode exists, it, it's a call out that we need to look at that frequency for a reason. When we hear these frequency peaks and valleys around the room, it, it's manifest as either the base is boosted when we stand in an area or it's diminished. Another important point about the second zone is it provides the room's transition frequency between the low and the mid-high frequencies. Now this frequency is referred to as the Schrader frequency or the crossover. We'll talk about how that's calculated a little bit later. Now the third zone is comprised of the mid frequencies, approximately two octaves above that crossover frequency for the room. And in my case, I'm considering between 200 and 1000 Hertz. And the fourth zone makes up the remainder of audible high frequencies. For me, I'm putting that uh, area between 1K and 20K. Now let's take a look at RT60. RT60 is defined as the time in seconds it takes a sound in a reverberant room to decay 60 dB in level. So an oversimplified example, a tom strike consists of a single frequency that peaks at 100 dB. The analyzer mic in the room will pick up the frequency of the tom and that frequency will decay to 40 dB eventually. The time for the frequency to cross the 40 dB threshold from the initial 100 dB is measured in milliseconds. In real life, our measurements will be using one-third octave bands rather than trying to manage individual frequencies. And in future episodes, we'll cover this in depth. But for now, think of targeting the 26 one-third band frequencies from 31.5 Hertz to 12 kilohertz. To achieve an acceptable RT60 for this room, we're gonna to work to have this range display approximately the same decay times, meaning that no frequency, no one third octave is gonna be 500 milliseconds and everything around it is gonna be 250. That's a little bit extreme, but the best example I could come up with off the top of my head. So now let's talk about the two software analysis tools that we'll be using today. The first one is Amrock. It comes from a company called Amcoustics. You can find it out on the web. The second software package we'll be using is REW or Room EQ Wizard. And it's a analysis tool, but it also allows us additional functionality to sweep the room with frequencies, record those tone sweeps, and then plot them on a graph. Okay, let's dive into AMROC. This web-based calculator is really powerful. Simply using your room dimensions and deciding which mode you want to display 
This calculator gives you feedback on five key areas of your room. So the first one is the display of the modes or standing waves within your room. Number two, it confirms using the Bonello criteria that in each octave of zone two, you've got an increasing amount of modes or standing waves. That's a good thing. Number three, it shows you what the standing waves look like and where they reside within your room. And that's going to be important later on as we treat the room. Another great feature of this web calculator, it shows us this calculation called the bolt area, which means the dimensions of our room considered a good ratio for listening to music or recording. So in my situation, I'm right on the boundary of a good ratio of height, width, and depth. Lastly, using the room's dimensions, it will tell me my volume of my room and the surface of my room. It automatically defaults to a calculation of RT60 for the room. I don't want my RT60 of my room to be 600 milliseconds. So what I'm gonna do is select a standard um, from a society or from an academic community. And I'm choosing the EBU listening room, which is, in my opinion, the closest thing to a home project studio. And by selecting that, it suggests that my RT60 should be 200 milliseconds. It defines for me what my Schrader frequency is. And it also defines for me what my absorption area will be needed to get that RT60 of 200 milliseconds. Now the second tool we'll talk about is an actual software package that you download and install on your PC or your Mac. And um, with what we just discussed about AMROC, I wanna show you what the functionality within REW is and how we can use it. So very much like AMROC, we have a room simulator. We can put in our dimensions and we have an additional ability to look at the surface absorption, so what's on the wall, and using a standard that's, that's been established by acousticians for years, my room has these kind of surface absorptions, mostly drywall, wood floor, very, very simple. With REW, it gives me the ability to put that information in and immediately you see my mode. So what I can do is, like I did in the uh, AMROC, I can turn off the tangential and oblique mode uh, movements. And then what you can see is my modes. Um, that's really, really graphically important. I can see it and it gives me instant feedback. The other nice thing with the room simulation functionality in uh, REW is it allows me to decide what distance from locations, from surfaces, that I want to put my monitors. I want to define where my mix position is going to be. So I can use this little graphic to position my head between the monitors. I can also say it, at what height am I going to do this at, okay, where my monitor is going to reside. And you can see immediately on the frequency plot what it means when you move things around. I think this is really important as we start our journey to treating our room that we have tools like these that help us to decide next steps. Now, one last thing about uh, REW that I want to share is once I've got this calculation set, room dimensions, my uh, surface absorptions, and then where my loudspeakers or monitors and where my microphone or my listener will sit within the room, I can generate a frequency response plot for that room. It said, okay, I think your zone two is between 30 and 200. And this is what I think your room is going to look like. It shows us our uh, modes. It shows us where our energy is the highest uh, based upon dB. It's a rough approximation. But then it also shows us what we've done within our room. And I think this is really powerful. I'm going to refer to this as my Sim 1. 
and I'm going to save it. With REW, we have an installed software package that will simulate our room based upon dimensions that we enter. But it's so much more powerful because what it allows us to do is to set a microphone up in the room, play frequency sweeps through our loudspeakers or monitors. Using that microphone, record those sweeps that show us what standing waves exist in the room from that listening point. Let me give you an example. I've put a mic within the room at what I consider is the optimum listening spot for my mix position. After placing that microphone, I open a different functionality within REW, run those sweeps, record those sweeps, and then save that file as a first sweep of this room. Let me show you that. Here's my first sweep of the room using REW. So what does this mean with the simulation? The beauty of that is that using the overlay function, I have the ability to see the red line here, obviously, that is the simulation, but the blue line is the actual recording of the frequency sweep within my room. Quite accurate. Not perfectly, but it is quite accurate. And the importance of REW and the information it contributes is that it will continue providing information for us, not only in zone two, but zone three and zone four. And how we uh, achieve that is through that process I described of setting up the microphone, running a sweep within the room, moving around traps or absorbers or diffusers, and then scanning it again and then assessing. Did the changes we make really do anything for the improved RT60 within the room? Did it improve or reduce the effect of the standing waves within the room? We've got two powerful tools, one a web-based calculator, the other a piece of software we installed on our computer. Both have some of the same functionality, but each has its specialty that we're going to use. Starting with AMROC, we're going to use AMROC to show us what our modes are, what our RT60 is, and most importantly, those standing waves as we work our treatment and base traps for zone two. Secondly, using REW to make multiple plots or multiple scans of the room will definitely provide us fairly instantaneous feedback of the changes we're making to absorbers, diffusers, or uh, traps around the room. And that's powerful because rather than someone telling us what we should do, we're actually continuing to learn about what our room does, what modes exist within it, what will happen when I place the microphone in this location, and when I'm doing my mixes, most importantly for a home project studio is that when I make a mix, do I have a lot of confidence that the mix will translate well to other devices. So that was a lot of information and I want to thank you for watching. If it's raised any questions or maybe I misspoke about something, please use the comment section below because I'm also about continual improvement. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.